Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And in the last episode, we showed how to use these LED tape lights to add light to structures. Um, and so, we're going to take the next logical step in this episode, and we are going to add some light to uh, this Lionel Caboose. Now, this was a uh, an MPC era uh, N5C porthole caboose. Um, interestingly, uh, it says built 176, um, Conrail didn't exist in January of 76. It didn't exist until, uh, April of 76. So, um, I, I think they kind of cheated on the month there. This was available in late 76. Um, but, uh, Conrail didn't exist and did not, uh, have an established paint scheme yet in January of that year. Um, so anyway, uh, so we've got this porthole caboose that the original light bulb is gone. And, uh, even the wires that originally came with it, they've fallen off over the years. So rather than replace the original light bulb, which I checked online and just a replacement incandescent bulb for these is about five bucks. So I've thought, well, let's just go ahead and replace it all. Let's upgrade it with LED lighting. And let's take the added step of, uh, let's, let's make it flicker free. One of my pet peeves with lighted cars and cabooses is as they go around the track, they go across switches and crossovers and the light goes on and off and on and off. And I think if I were a miniature crewman on my O gauge railroad, I, that would, you know, I'd be getting headaches and everything else, and it's so annoying with the light going on and off. So, uh, by adding just a few things to the circuit, uh, mainly capacitors, um, we're creating an anti-flicker. Now, this is not the same thing as constant voltage, constant intensity lights. For that, you need a voltage regulator, which is more expensive. We're not doing that, but we are going to add... Uh, capacitors, and that is going to make it so that you will see some difference in light intensity just for that moment as it goes across the switch, but the light will not go out complete. First, let's let's cover the basics here. We've got our our feed coming from the transformer, and uh, so I've got a little breadboard here where I can um, you know play around with circuits and uh, get them to work. And uh, this first part is unnecessary for just lighting the car. I do have a small bridge capacitor here, uh, a one amp bridge capacitor, which is more than enough to drive these six LEDs. Why six LEDs? Because it's the best that matches the length of the frame. Nine is too long, so six is about right. And so, well, is six LEDs bright enough? Well, we'll take the, uh, the cab here and put it over and uh, here let me turn off my extra camera light here and as you can see six bulbs is going to be bright enough for the caboose and it's really brighter than that the these bright leds that i'm using on my workbench um, are disguising it a little bit that's plenty of intensity to be seen on the layout so the easy way is simply to replace, uh, we would have our wire coming from the center rail, our wire coming from the wiper giving us our center rail and, and our third rail. So we would have our hot and our common. Those would originally go to the light bulb, which I've taken off. And so the simplest way would just be to take that, use our little connector here, wire in the two wires from the roller connector and attach our strip. And if you need more details on how to do this, it's in my previous video and uh, you're ready to go. You don't need anything else. Since I'm adding the anti flicker circuitry, I do need a bridge capacitor to turn the AC to DC because I'm a bridge capacitor bridge rectifier. Thank you. The bridge rectifier <laughs> to change the AC to DC because I'm using a capacitor to make the lights not flicker. Okay, so here's what we have. We have our AC power coming from my transformer, which is, would represent track power. Uh, and I've got it going into these two slots on the breadboard. That 
power comes in here in this little bitty bridge rectifier here. And this side is the inputs, and then we have a positive and a negative output, um, which are then, I've got them wired here to this side to the positive and the negative here on the breadboard. Now, since these LEDs, this LED strip runs on 12 volts, uh, it's going to take quite a bit of capacitance power to keep these lit. Um, and I don't really have any big capacitors in, uh, in my collection at the moment, but before I go out to the local electronics store, I can test and see what value of capacitor I need. Now, of course, I could do the math on it, but I really want to see the results here. So by wiring these capacitors in parallel across the circuit, I can add them up until I get the effect that I want, which in this case, I have four 1000 microfarad and one 470 microfarad. So 4,470 microfarads. And what you're going to see is when I turn it on, here, let me turn the uh, spotlight off here so you can see this even better. The most that I get is a slight dimming as the rollers go across your switches and crossovers and such. So now I know in, um, to replace all of these in the circuit, I'm going to get uh, the next common um, value would be a 4700 microfarad capacitor. So one of those will replace all five of these. And so again, so it goes from AC power to the bridge rectifier, turns it to DC, runs through the capacitor, and then out to my LED strip. And that's all, that's all there is to it. Now, if I wanted to add marker lights, I'm going to use the regular plastic inserts here for the marker lights. If I wanted to run LEDs, I would take these out and I could use another terminal strip on this end uh, of my LED strip. So I've got power coming in here, power coming out here, and then I would need a resistor of appropriate value, depending on the LEDs that I was using, to reduce this 12 volt down to a value that the two uh, LEDs that I would put on my marker lights would work. So it would just be adding on to the tail end of the circuit here. Uh, and I would do that because I've already um, rectified everything to DC. I wouldn't need anything else, just a resistor going into my LEDs. And now we have replaced the five capacitors that totaled up to 4,470 microfarads with one uh, 4,700 microfarad uh, capacitor. This one is rated for uh, 25 volts, 4,700 microfarads. And the result is like so. We kill the power and you see it just flickers just a little bit as I turn the volume on and off. It stays very, very, very constant. And then we turn it off completely and it slowly fades out to zero. So now it's a matter of transferring this circuit from my breadboard and soldering it together and installing it in the caboose. Now it's really sort of overkill for this small circuit, but I am going to uh, use this uh, copper prototype board and uh, solder the pieces on here. And uh, yes, I have a big magnifying glass because I am a blind old man with trifocals. And uh, so uh, I'm trying to make this as big as possible so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, and you can see my less than stellar soldering job, but we have our power coming in from the track, it goes to this side of the bridge rectifier. This side of the bridge rectifier comes out and connects in with our capacitor and with our uh, wires going to the lights. And we've replaced the test leads with my official wires here and a quick smoke test. And again, it works. So now I've got my circuit board together. I've run the wire going to 
the pickups here through the frame and where I'm going to attach it's easier I take, take this axle off to get access and the wire going to the center roller is going to attach right there and the wire going to the outside rails is going to attach right there. And this part of the circuit is still AC before it hits the bridge rectifier so it doesn't matter which wire goes where. And now with wires connected here we put the axle back on and we're ready to mount board. Okay, so while I was somewhat proud of my first attempt here, this uh, is just uh, looks nasty. Um, it does work, um, but I just couldn't take the look there. So uh, I redid this, uh, and like I said, I'm very proud. This is the first one I did, and it does work. Um, so with <laughs> what I learned from the first one in mind, I came back, and I hope you'll agree, this is much nicer looking, and uh, hopefully... You know, well, I know it. I've already tested it. It works just fine. Um, so, you know, same thing. I've got the wires coming in from the feeds. They go here, which then ties in to the bridge rectifier. Positive and negative come out, go into my capacitor, which comes out and then goes into my light strip this way. Now, instead of using this big hunk of styrofoam, um, first I laid down a layer of vinyl electrical tape so that if one of these connections should somehow get down to the frame, it won't short out against the metal of the frame. And then in order to create an air gap, um, I just used some of this uh, Gorilla mounting putty and I put some in the corners and pressed it down and we have a nice firm seal. And uh, so it is uh, ready to put back together and it works fine. So um, <laughs> instead of this big hunk of styrofoam and everything, this looks much nicer and I'm going to repurpose this one uh, in another spot on the layout. Um, but here we go, the finished product looks much nicer and uh, with the experience I gained from the first one this took me about 20 minutes to put together with all the solder joints I'm still not the world's best solder -er 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 -er. uh, <clears throat> but I am getting better so there it is so here you see the finished product our Conrail caboose with upgraded LED lighting with a non flickering circuit compared to uh, an original Lionel MPC, same era, uh, but with the original light bulb, and then also a similar era Lionel searchlight car, again with the original bulb. And so you can see a big difference not only in the intensity of light, this is about half throttle, but as the train runs around the layout, you will notice a lot of difference in the amount of flickering. Um, here, let me take the camera light off so you can see better the intensity difference. And these LEDs are also available in a soft white, which is more of a yellow compared to this, if you like this, uh, this color better. And uh, so here we go with uh, a train. So there it is, a modified anti-flicker LED lighted caboose, um, total parts less than the cost of replacing the original light bulb, and uh, pretty easy to do even for someone like me who is a novice in electronics. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll like this and uh, maybe give this a try in uh, some of the projects on your layout. And uh, so I hope you like the video, and if you do, Please click on like, please share it, please subscribe, hit that notifications bell, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and most importantly, until next time, keep the trains running.